Ah, let's get this show on the road. What's going on, everybody? How everybody feeling this Tuesday? I see people are jumping in the jumping in the room real quick. What's going on? What's going on? Today we're gonna do it like we always do it. Well, I'm gonna say how we always do it, but today we're definitely doing short and sweet. We're gonna put 30 minutes on the clock and we're gonna rock. Today we're gonna talk about three things you need, and this is things that I get sent to me, emails, Instagram. People come on the website and send a message, but there are three things that people need to definitely make sure they have an order before they even start to worry about clients. Because I get so many people like, Ty, where are clients? Where are clients? How can I get clients? How can I get clients? Some people are new to the channel. Some people are have been watching the channel for some time. But today we're going to go over some things you may be familiar with if you're a diehard Flash Home Academy uh, subscriber. So bear with me, but we got to go over some of these things for some of the people that are, that are having these problems and asking these questions. But before we do anything, you know, we got to roll the graphics. So let's do that. Perfect, perfect. What's going on, everybody? If this is your first time on this channel, my name is Ty. I am a former Army combat photographer and the owner of Flash Phone Media, which is a production company based out of Texas. And this channel is simply about turning your passion into profit. It's about the business side of the industry. If you want to learn how to Photoshop stretch marks, how to fix your grandmama eyebrows or make your sister look a little bit slimmer, this is not the channel for you. However, if you want to lead at nine to five, if you want to build a business, build a brand, and you need the information to help you do that, this is the channel for you. Good looking out on the super chat. What is it, Dawn three hundred one? Good looking out on the on the super chat. Today's episode is brought to you by our number one sponsor, Flash Film Academy. Of course, Flash Film Academy is a online training platform that provides courses and contracts for content creators. We're just about teaching people the business. And if you're serious about learning it, that's the place you need to be. Today, and we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna get right into three things that I got a triple, usually it's double down on, but I got a triple down on because it's very important that you understand these. And for those of you who've taken a master course, you understand how important it is to do these things in order, in order, right? Everybody want to know where the clients are, but these are three things you really, 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 really need to focus on in order to get to the point where your clients are there and clients won't appear until you have these three, three things together. Once you get these three things together, you'd be surprised how they fall on your lap. Okay. First thing, of course, is one of the big super topics that I talk about here is niche, right? And we're not just going to say just niche, right? Because everybody here or those who follow me a lot get it. Got to have a niche. Got to have a niche. What you need to understand is your niche needs to be two to three layers deep, right? Don't just do just event photography. Do corporate event photography that are maybe award ceremonies. Go deeper with your niche. Don't just have a surface level. I do commercial video niche go three layers deep commercial videos for who that do what i create content for doctors that help doctors explain to their patients the the upcoming procedures that is my niche the reason you need that now a lot of people think i'm just telling you to shoot one thing you can shoot everything but having a niche is what it's what allow clients to identify that you are a subject matter expert and you are worth this big dollar amount that you're asking for. It makes it a whole lot easier. And again, if you don't, if you own a BMW, you're willing to pay more to have your BMW serviced at a BMW dealership than anywhere else. If, if John's auto mechanic told you it's $3,000 to fix it, and the BMW said it's $5,000 to fix it, and you have the money, 
you're not going to second guess it. You're going to go to the BMW dealership if you have the money. If you don't have the money and you're trying to cut corners, you may go to Bob Mechanics. But guess what? Though you are like that, you may not want to attract clients that are like that. You may want to attract clients who have the money to go to the BMW dealership. So from a consumer standpoint, you may agree with going to Bob's auto mechanic from a business standpoint. You don't want to attract that. Now, Bob has to get those clients. He has to go after those clients because Bob doesn't specialize in one particular car. So he has to, he has to, to make up for that, for that loss of expertise or specialization, he has to lower price because he can't compete value-wise with a BMW dealership if you have a BMW. So you, as a content creator, you got to get rid of the consumer mentality and understand the business side of it. To attract high-end clients, you need to specialize in something and specialize in that in three layers, right? Make sure you guys hit that like, that thumbs up button, that like button, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. So again, you have to specialize in something. I know content creator, you can shoot everything. I get it. But clients, consumers don't understand that your ability to properly expose a baby, they don't see that when you got to take pictures of a dog. They just don't see it. They can't relate the two. So to help them make a better buying decision and a buying decision that they are willing to spend more money on, right? The value is in experts. You do not want someone working on anything in your life that don't, that, that don't specialize in nothing. We want people that specialize in it. That's why we don't just hire random people to fix pipes. We want plumbers, right? People who want who, who are looking to buy what you have to offer. They're looking for subject matter experts. If you're doing promo videos for, um, I could say dental or barbers, specialize in that. Be the best in that. And you'll bring in high quality clients. Just specializing alone adds value. And I've always, I said this all the time. Companies that don't specialize in a lot of stuff that do everything can only sell you on having the cheapest price. If you don't believe me, go look at Walmart, right? Go look at Walmart and go look at how they push their paint products, right? I like I like to use paint as an example um, because they sell everything. They offer the cheapest price on paint. But if you go into a store that only sells paint for your house, their prices are going to be a little bit more. They're going to have a, a larger selection and they're going to have more knowledgeable reps who only know about paint. Not reps that got to worry about plumbers, toys, car stereos, candy and jewelry, and they got to figure out where to point you, but they're going to have reps that can only talk to you about paint. And they their knowledge of paint is way deeper than the guy over at Walmart who just got pulled over from the electronics department to cover this paint, this area of paint. So you want to make sure that when clients perceive your brand, when they look at your brand, when they're thinking about doing business with you, when they receive that portfolio or receive that, um, I don't want to say bill, but when they receive that, um, off the tip of my tongue, when they receive information about, you know, what services you have to offer, what, you know, what the pricing is and everything, they know this is coming from an expert. They're willing to pay that. Again, if you're trying to do everything for everybody, you've just cheapened what somebody's willing to pay you. And that's a lot of times you get people, the flip side of that are, are content creators like, oh, it's too saturated. Nobody's looking at paying nothing. People don't want to pay me. It's too saturated with people who are trying to do everything. And it's too saturated with, and, and when you got people who are trying to do everything, they're not going to pay a price for that. Right. You're not going to pay a price for it. Um, so so I want to make sure that you understand how important that is, because a lot of people run out here um, and they just don't get it. Right. They just want to be expensive and they don't just because they got a camera. The word I was looking for is portfolio. When you bring when you present your portfolio and your portfolio says we do nothing but this, this, this. It shows value instantly. It's it's an instant way of showing value. Having all your ducks in a row 
is an instant way of showing value. Let me let me um let me break it down even more, right? When you're looking for plastic surgery, right? A lot of people got wires, friends that got plastic surgery, right? You want to go to a place that only does the type of plastic surgery you want. You don't want to go to a place that does something completely different, right? When you go to a website, you want to see nothing but before and after pictures on this one body part. I don't care about, you know, that's why usually plastic surgeons usually do to two to about three different operations. Can they do more? Yes. But you don't see a lip plastic surgeon showing butts and backs and lipo. like you rarely see both. Right. You usually see a plastic surgeon focus on one area. He's either doctor back or doctor breast or whatever. But if you go to his website, it's nothing but before and after pictures a hundred times over because that's what they specialize in. And it allows them to be reassuringly expensive. And that's the goal. You want to be expensive. I forgot to start my, my time. We're lucky, y'all. Let's go. So one thing is you have to have a niche that's three layers deep. I do this for this that do what? So I create videos for companies that own car washes to help the client understand the process of the car wash or to help the client understand how we recycle water and save water with this car wash. There's just, you want to make sure you're three layers deep on your niche. That is what you need to figure out before you come up with a company name, before you come up with company colors. And I'm going to tell you why. And, and I'm not going to go too deep into it um, because you know, we got a lot of people who took the master course and I go into this in every detail in the master course. In fact, I'll pop that up there because uh, I'll be getting messages like I'm getting right there. Um, So there's reasons why your niche needs to come first. Right. Because it determines everything, your, your business name, your colors. Think about it. If you pick the niche that went into the medicine, medical field, but your color, your your, your company name is. I don't know, regular, regular media, you know what I'm saying? And your colors is blue and orange. Do you really think doctors are going to take you serious if you come in there in a blue and orange polo? They won't. If you go in the medical field, you have to go blue, white, and that's about it. You don't even see a lot of reds, even though the cross is red, you don't even see a lot of reds in the medical field. It's mostly blue and white. So, you may want to have your colors reflect that. You may want to go with a lighter color, a blue logo, maybe just red in the cross or something like that. Those are little things that will help your business do two, three, four, five percent better. Those are little things that will help your business grow that you have to think about. That a lot of people are like, I never thought about that. I never thought I never thought about that. I never thought about the importance of colors, the importance of your name. If you're regular media. So if a dentist got to choose between smile productions and regular media, who do you think they're going to choose? It's easy, right? Looking at it now, now you look at it and you're like, oh, okay, I get it now. But when you thought of your company name, you didn't think of, you didn't think of it like that. You wanted something dope. I want Spracket Super Media Production. Nah, if, if your client is dentist and they're sitting in front of Super Media whatever and Beautiful Smile Productions, that alone will steer them to look at that other company. You've lost, regardless of what you provided. You are you're 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 playing underdog simply because you didn't have the right company name because you didn't think it out. You thought I'm gonna come up with this dope name. It's gonna be dope. It's gonna be something that everybody like. Super Super Sparks Media Company of the Future dot com, and then you go into video about dog grooming, and that's your niche. And you're competing with doggycontent.com compared to Super Spark Media Group. And nobody's like, I'm going over here. Even if you name it after yourself, Smith Productions versus doggy creators, doggy content creators.com or whatever, doggy media. And you're trying to go after dog groomers. Just that's those are very little things. That one, you can have a person with the exact same resume, exact same website side by side, and one is just seeing success 
and the other just don't know why. Like, wh why am I not? Why is this not working? It's very, very little things like that that people don't think about. They just go into it thinking that people are just going to accept them for who they are. Your, your, your clients aren't your family. Your family accepts you for who you are. They stick with you. Oh, you want to wear that? You want to wear your hair like that? Okay. That's cool. You know, as a parent, if you got young kids, you know that your, your, your three-year-old will put on snow boots in the summertime and you got to just rock with it. Like, don't even fight him. Just let him do it. Let him wear his cape. You know what I'm saying? Your kids want to wear a vest and a cape in the summertime and you just like, don't, don't, don't argue. Don't argue. Don't even just don't acknowledge it. Just he wanted to wear his cape. So you want to make sure that, you know, you realize that your client ain't dealing with that. Your family will deal with it. So that's why your family is whatever name you say. This is a good idea. Your family like, yeah, but crack photography. Yeah, because it's like crack, but it's but it's better. So I got butt crack for your family. Like that makes sense. That's dope. Nobody that's looking at that name come across their screen on Google will look to do business or will think that they are subject matter experts. It's two layers to it. It's one. Will I do business with you? And the top layer is, do you look like a subject matter expert? Do you look like the best in the industry based off your name? Which one do you want to be, right? So you want to make sure that once you pick your niche, then you go into your name because you don't want to be butt crack photography. The only people that's going to call you is the adult industry. And you sound like somebody they would love to work with. Bruh. Anyway, so that's something that you have to make sure your niche, that's why your niche is so important and it needs to happen in the beginning, right? Also, another thing with niche, Niche will determine what gear you need, right? If you go into product photography, you're going to need macro lens. You're going to need certain glass and certain stuff to help. You may need backgrounds and top-down lighting scenarios if you go into product photography. If you're going into something that's different, you won't need that gear. So picking your niche will help determine your gear, like your camera, a lot of things based off your niche. And what business you, what area you decide to go into. All right. So niche is extremely important. And if you, anybody who, who die hard, know I punch people in the throat with it all day long. Make sure your niche digs deep. Don't just say commercial this. Right. Don't just say that. Um, Real quick. Good question popped up. Do you have any favorite niches from your personal experience? Good bang for your buck. So this is the thing. And I really, really, really want you to keep this in mind. Take the money part out of the niche, right? Anything that you're extremely good at, you're going to make good money from if you're in an area that supports it, right? I don't want to be the best cowboy photographer and I'm living up north. It ain't a lot of cowboys. So, and to be good at a niche, you have to love it because you have to talk about it. You have to have the ability to speak intelligently about that niche. And so you have to, it can't be something you can just clock in and do and clock out. It has to be an area in which you may have experienced. Did your family own something like that? Did you grow up around it? Something that you love because for you to be a subject matter expert, you have to have these talks with clients. When you go into that specialty paint store, those people who work there care about paint enough where they can talk to you about, you need this primer, you need that, and a little bit of this and this color. Like, it can't be just reciting from a book. Uh, I think that go, those guys work at Walmart. They don't work at specialty paint shops. They, If you're near a micro center, right? I'll give you a good analogy. Micro center um, is a store that specialize in computer parts, right? They specialize in computer parts, electronics. Um, if you're if you're near one, they're kind of like what Comp USA used to be. They're, they're really, really techie guys, right? They still old school. They still wear the shirt and tie. But if you go in there, you can get all kind of RAM and all kind of stuff, like everything you need to build a computer, a PC right there. You don't need to go nowhere else. Those guys are going to be way more knowledgeable than somebody at Best Buy who like, yeah, we got the latest HP over there. They can just read off stuff. 
Uh, it's a 2.8 gigahertz. I can read that, bro. I don't need you to tell me. It's 2.8 gigahertz with the uh DDR3 RAM, and it got two terabytes of hard drive space. I see it. It's on the card. You know, if you're a photographer and you ain't got one of these coffee mug, let's see if I can get it to focus. Your family, your family don't love you. I got like six of them. So. If you go into if you go into a micro center, again, those guys are going to be able to talk to you about very specific details on computer hardware and software that you just can't get other places. You know, you can make fun of them, call them whatever. They're gonna come in with their glasses and they're gonna be like, "Listen, uh, listen, bud, you don't want to run that graphic card on that motherboard because the the voltage ratio of the you'd be like, what? Say what?" When that when that grab that graphic card's not getting enough power from that board because it's not the new whatever whatever that's put on the new boards that's a 2020 you need the 21 okay so I don't mind paying more when I go to micro center because usually I'm leaving with great knowledge and the right stuff the first time at Best Buy they like uh let me go to the computer they go to the computer a lot let me look it up on the website. Micro Center, those guys know it because they love it. They live it. And you need to be like that for your brand, right? You need to offer that for whatever niche you're in. So, you know, photography and videography is, you know, the number one thing you do. And the number one A is whatever niche you're in. You need to be able to talk about it. You want to be Micro Center. You don't want to be Best Buy, right? And that comes to what works for clients in that industry, right? Again, I use dentists all the time. That that comes for clients in that industry. If you're if you're working with dentists, you need to know about the latest trends and technologies with dentists, the latest systems they're using. Um, you need to know about what's going on in the dental industry, how they're switching from, you know, putting in the regular hard fillings to this liquid and they're using this light to light. Like you need to know about that stuff. You need to probably go to some dental conventions in your area. You need to get to know things so you can talk about it. And, and they understand that they're talking to someone that's equal to them. So you want to make sure that you are, you have your niche narrowed down and you're intelligent when it, you, you can speak intelligently about it and you can offer intelligent solutions. Hey, in the industry, we're starting to see a lot of dentists shift towards podcasts because this is what they're getting from it. We're starting to see a lot of people in this industry do shorter um, portrait style Instagram videos or, hey, you know, we're working with certain, we're starting to notice a lot of lawyers are going to TikTok to put out little tidbits to help grow their. So those are things you need to be mindful of when you are, when you have picked a niche. There is no way you can be that mindful of every industry. It's just not possible. It's just not possible. So pick a niche, lock it down. That's number one. That's the number one thing you need to do out of the three. Number two, the number two thing you need to do, and if you are a diehard, you know where I'm going. Your demo reel. Your demo reel. Let me be really, 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 really blunt and honest with you. I want you to go, I want you to go look at your demo reel or whatever is the first video you got on your website. If it is your best clips to music, you have failed. Where my button at? It's not cutting it no more. In fact, it wasn't cutting it in 2018. But that's all they told you to do and you did it. It's cool. That's why I'm here to help. Your, your demo reel needs to be a commercial for your brand. Period. Your demo reel needs to hook your target audience and it needs to hook them fast. It needs to be quality work that explain what you do, that explain how you help your niche client or your target audience. It needs to explain it, not show it. It needs to explain it. Let me say it again, because a lot of people are like, huh? Because you're just showing people dope clips and dope images. They don't know what you did. They don't know how this helped the client. They don't know what's the end result of creating this content. They have no idea. So you need to make sure you show them what you can do for a client. Period. 
That's what you need to do. Your demo reel needs to punch people in the mouth. It, ne- it needs to make people feel almost dumb for not choosing your brand. It needs to make people say, I have that problem. You solve that problem? But that's the problem I got. And you're telling me you all you do is solve that problem. It, it needs to make people be feel, feel dumb when they go somewhere else and other companies are saying, we do everything. And you like, but but I got my problem here. And they said specifically that they solved this problem. Okay, let me go look at another video company. We do everything. Oh, man, I don't know if they're going to handle this problem. That other company said specifically, that's the problem we solve. Let me go look at this. I got a quote from this other guy. It was cheaper, but they said they solve everything. I don't know if they're going to be able to solve my problem. When I have this one company out of the 10 companies I, that I looked at, They were a little bit on the expensive side. However, they told me in their video on their website and their company name and their company colors that they do nothing but solve these problems. That's who I'm going to go with. That's who I'm going to go with. Make them make that decision for them easier by designing your brand around that niche and designing a demo reel that speaks to that niche. Make this easier for y'all. Don't make it hard on yourself, right? A lot of people feel like ain't no clients, nobody's buying, blah, 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 all that stuff. Uh-uh. Doesn't work like that. All you got to do is you're right. Solve their problem. Look at a, a common problem that, uh, that somebody's having in a niche and continue to solve it over and over again. Yep. It happens all the time. People just, it's lazy ball, man. Listen, it, the market is saturated, but it's saturated with a lot of content creators who are lazy on the business side because the the, the biggest lie in this industry, right? Let me, let's me let just circle this. Oh my, the biggest lie, the biggest lie in this industry, put this on the screen for y'all, is that beautiful content trumps everything. The biggest lie, anybody who does this for a living, who works, not not filmmakers, filmmakers are different. They need quality, right? I mean, let's be real. We can, I, we'll go into filmmaking as, as well. But the biggest lie that you're told today in this industry is it's all about the quality and it's not no more. That ended when the 5D Mark II came out. And people got full frame HD video that was of quality from a DSLR. I can line up the the top 10 most expensive cameras and I can line up five cameras under 10,000 and you would have to have a calibrated monitor and five years of experience to tell which is which. Do the more expensive cameras look a little better? Of course, they do. Yes. Do the average person care? Nope. They don't give a damn. Not not from that difference in quality. They don't give a damn. All of you have iPhones in your pockets. Some of you are Android users. and It's a whole other subject. But your iPhone can shoot better than a $50,000 high-end production camera could probably eight years ago, six years ago, five years ago. Your your high end, your cell phone can outshoot a camera they used to film the NFL with probably four to five years ago, right now. They weren't doing 4K60. They probably didn't have a low light capability. Like it's it's... It's crazy, but it's it's just where we're going. It's not about quality, right? It's all about the business side of it. If you think that I'm a photographer and I just got to shoot better pictures to get money, not at all. I know a lot. Of, I know a lot of really good broke photographers, really good broke content creators, because they didn't take any time to understand how a website worked how a demo reel work, why niche is important, 
and they spent more time learning Photoshop. And I can get a picture Photoshopped from a company that I use that's in India for 95 cents a picture. Now, how valuable is that skill? How valuable is that skill set? When I can get it done overseas for 95 cents. And you spent five, six months of your life learning how to work Photoshop. Where you should have been spending five, six months out of your life trying to understand the difference in copy for your site to help bring in your target audience. So something you definitely got to think about. That's number two. Let me ask you a few questions real quick because I got a few questions pop up. And we're almost out of time. Um, great question. How do I get hired by corporations or people with bigger budgets? I make basketball videos, but the kids don't have money like that. Okay, what problem are you looking to solve? Right? You're you're within the within the niche of basketball videos, what problems are you looking to solve? Are you looking to create training videos? What's what's the problem? It's it's great that you like basketball videos. But you have to ask yourself, what problem can I solve with basketball videos? Right? If I made basketball videos and that was my thing, I'm going after coaches. I'm going after people who have basketball products. I'm going after people who have basketball gyms. I'm going after leagues like AAU. I'm going after colleges because they have problems that can be solved with content. Right. There are people I can provide a cinematic solution for in the industry of basketball because basketball is a billion dollar industry. It makes money. There don't you can't look at it and say, well, it don't make money. It, it makes billions. The question is, you liking something? It's not enough. You have to think about what type of solution can I provide? Right. What am I what solution am I providing? Not just I want to point my camera at basketballs. You got to say, you got to think about, am I making training videos? Am I making instructional videos? Who benefits from that? Okay, then that's who I need to go after. So definitely. Um, scary good marketing. So we sell results, not video quality. That's how we shoot commercials for 10K. That's 1080p. That's exactly right. I have not delivered a 4K video to a client yet. And yes, definitely. It's all about it's all about pre-production, post-production. It's not about the, the camera quality. I, honestly, if if I had like a, a Ursa Mini shell and I can just slide my cell phone in, I could probably shoot the same video and my client would not know. They would not know. Darrell, good looking out on the super chat, buddy. Um, aside from creating your website trap, how would you go about Cold approaching clients in the store. Would you introduce yourself um, or do meetings that day or follow up later? Okay, let's talk about that. Let's talk about cold approaches, right? Um, depending on what your niche is, now this differ per niche. Like I, I need to know if you can post what your niche is, there's different ways to go about it, understanding who your target audience is. I always say if you're doing event photography, it's easier to go after event planners than it is those who need events. Right. Because, you know, event planners, whoever, whatever company hiring an event planner got a budget. They got money. You don't hire an event planner if you broke. You got a budget. So instantly, you know that that event planner is going to bring you nothing but high end clientele. I guarantee you, if you're in an area that has. That's a city. There's corporate event planners. There's regular event planners. If you do weddings, when I was shooting weddings, I would get cool with my event planners. I don't have to go after people who are looking to get married. I would I would go and bring um, gift cards and baskets to my event planners, and they would keep my calendar packed. I give them a kickback. They would keep my calendar packed. I would wake up and say, oh, I got to shoot in May. I got three shoots in May on my calendar. That's how I would do it. So depending on what your niche is, will determine how you approach someone. I I am big. I'm, I'm I'm telling people like I don't healthy food restaurants is your niche. Okay. This is the thing. This is the the misconception about getting clients. 
to get clients, you don't really go after them. You just appear where they look, right? Because that's when they need you. If somebody knocked on your door right now and had a skillet set, you're like, I don't care. We got these new skillets, man. You can cook. They st- I don't care, bro. I'm, I'm in the middle of something. Like, I don't have time to sit at a door and listen to you sell me something I don't need. Those aren't the clients you want. Because now you got to educate them, you got to convince them, and you got to convert them. I don't got time for that. However, whenever somebody looks online to buy a new skillet set, to buy new things for their kitchen, I want to be there first. Or if I'm not first, I want to make sure I'm in the mix and I'm very good at what I do so I can beat my competition. That's where clients are. They're not, you're not going to, you're, you're not going to have a lot of success running into somebody's door, selling them something, right? When's the last time you've been stopped and somebody was selling you something that was way like, it can be anything. It'd have to be a deal of the century. I got a 70 inch TV. Give me $50 for it. All right. But see, we create content. It's not that simple, right? There's no punchline to it. You have to explain it. So it's much easier when you are where people look when they need that problem. It's the yellow pages effect I always talk about. You know, yellow pages is so expensive because when people go to yellow pages, they need to buy something now. You don't go there to bra. I wonder what plumbing, what plumbers are in my area. It would be nice to know who, what, what, what uh, gutter cleaning companies are within my zip code. I might care about that. When you go to Yellow Pages, you have an emergency. You need it done now. You're, you're looking to buy. That's where you want to be. You're not going to make it going after people door to door or approaching a lot of people. It just doesn't happen like that. Now, that's good for reminding people, hey, guys, just a reminder, and I do it all the time. Hey, guys, just a reminder, if you guys ever need video content, photography, we're here. That's it. You can't go and be like, buy now. This is the idea. This, it don't work like that because they don't need you, right? Commercials are usually there to remind you. That's why Geico and these insurance companies are pushing hard to remind you that if you ever decide you want to see if you can pay less, Give us 15 minutes. You'll pay 15% less or, you know, look us up just to stay in your head. That's all they need to do. Because at one point in time, your your insurance company is going to make you mad. Your rates are going to go up. Every six months, somebody rates go up. And they're like, oh, I'm, y'all want me to pay this? Let me go see who else out there. What was that one commercial I seen? Oh, it was Woomp. There it is. That's the Geico. Let me go call them up. That's the goal of it. So you can't run up on people and sell. You ever, you ever, I mean, think about it. When was the last time you walked out of Walmart and somebody tried to sell you a mixtape or something? You're like, bruh, I don't care if you had Drake on the hook, bro. I'm Get away from me. Get away from me right now, bro. I'm, I'm leaving. I got stuff in my mind. Here you are talking about a mixtape. I don't care if it's the, my favorite music. Get out of here with that. Like, you're, think about it. Last time somebody sold you something, you don't even want to make eye contact with the with the homeless people at the corner, you just like, oh man, like, oh now I feel like he like, please, sir, I'm hungry. You like, oh, you, you be at the in the car like these. You know what I'm saying? You don't even want to make eye contact with him, but you want to be able to walk up to somebody and tell them that you take photography and video and that you want to sell them, you know, something. It doesn't work like that. However, there are thousands of people per day that are on Google and places looking for people to create content. Thousands of people. If you do your research, Google will tell you exactly how many for each keyword in your area. So the third thing that you need to have, thing number three that you need to have is the obvious thing. It's a great website. If if your website, if your gear costs more than your website, Because a lot of people are cool with spending $3,000 for a lens. A lot of people are cool with that. $1,000 for a lens. Sigma come out with a lens. It's, and, and it's, you know, they know Sony selling the same 20, 40, 70 for, for you know, 21, 5. Sigma come out with the, with the same lens. They do the same thing for 1200 And y'all like, that's a steal. That's a great price. But, but want to get a free Wix website. Let that sink in for a minute.
You're begging for what you need and buying what you want. You're literally saying my, my methods of making money is secondary to my gear. How much sense does that make? Right? How much sense does that make? That makes no sense. So many people will invest in gear before they invest in knowledge and their website. It's, it's mind blowing. It's, it's mind. Like I look at it all the time and people are like, I don't understand why I'm not successful. I can tell you cause you got $6,000 wrapped up in gear and nothing wrapped up in this. Your most important tool that you have is this or your website. Which is, you're correct, Scary Good Marketing, your 24-7 sales rep. It is, it is amazing how many people ask me where clients at. And their website looked like they put it together in 10 minutes on their cell phone. Good looking out, Daryl. Appreciate the super chats today. It is like it, it is mind-blowing. That's my 30-minute timer. We're gonna wrap it up in a few. It is absolutely mind blowing how many people that's why listen a lot of people were like when i released the course they were like well the course is a little bit expensive i was like it's cheaper than the cheapest trash lens you can buy but it teaches you how to buy all the lenses in the world like at first i was like man maybe you're right then i was like you know what no the 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 a Tamron lens that won't even, it'll barely be looked at as a decent lens. People are spending $1,200 for And it's sitting in a box making you no money. 99% of the time of its life. If photographers didn't go out and buy that, and I'm teaching you everything to start a business, I'm not going lower than that. Period. So it's about people who understand that this is more important than any piece of gear you can get. Period. I can show you how to take over the game on a 5D Mark II without a problem, video and photo and the right lights. But it's about growing the business. It's about understanding the business side and people just don't want to do it. So um, did your courses teach when you should use hourly rate versus projected rate? So in the master course, I teach a structure based pricing, which is kind of a combination of the two. We, we kind of get away from that. Um, and we teach structure based pricing, which is a base price plus an hourly per project. That way the clients know exactly how you came to that price point. They know what overages is and they can plan future shoots based off of your price point. And they're not, you're not just eyeballing it. The last thing you want to do is lose a client because last time you told them it was 1200 for the last job for two hours. And now this is three hours. And now all of a sudden it's 1800 and they don't understand why. So I teach a structure based pricing. I actually, actually provide a structure based pricing calculator um, in the master course. How do you feel on selling prints on your website? I don't like it. It's it's a it's a 1999 business model. Um unless you have a This is the thing. Your website is not naturally going to generate enough traffic to sell enough prints prints to make money. So I use a service called Shootproof, right? The only time I sell prints is when I do event photography and the viewers have the ability to buy their own prints. That's it. That's it. I don't take pictures of something beautiful and sell prints. Not saying it can't be done, but you need a strong following to do it. Media Smith, um, investing in your mind, skills, and brand is far more valuable than gear. You can lose your gear, but you can always, uh, but you'll always have the knowledge and gear. You're exactly right. You can rent everything you currently own, but you cannot rent that. You cannot rent what your website will do for you. You cannot rent what good marketing will do for you. You cannot rent what a great demo reel would do for you. You cannot rent what being specific within your niche and understanding your target audience and having that target audience to go after in your marketing plan 
your business model, your, your colors, your logo type, your gear, understanding that is way more valuable than any gear you can have. Let me make sure I pronounce this right. Good looking on the super chat. Aladai Luna Flores. Thank you. Appreciate the super chat. So it's very, very important that you invest in this. Gear come and go. I can listen. If you gave me a 5D Mark II, a 24 to 70, a 70 to 200, and a 50 millimeter, and a regular three point lighting system. I don't care if it's tungsten. I don't care if it's daylight. I don't care if it's light bulbs from, from Home Depot and three lights, three light stands stands or three lamps that I can control. I can outshoot a majority of people. The thing is also I can make six figures a year using that setup because I know how to market that skill set. And if I have a client that wants something crazy, I can just go rent it. So it's not about the gear. However, gear companies make a lot of money. The Canons, the Black Magics, the Tamrons, the, they make a lot of money. So they have the budget to market to you, right? There isn't a lot of companies that make money off the business side because there's so many different components. Gear companies have the ability to mark because there's so much margin in a lens because they know you're going to use it to make money, right? That's why Alexa's are $120,000 because they know they're selling it to Marvel Studios or a company that's getting ready to make a billion dollar Black Panther movie. Yeah, they want some of that money. So keep that in mind. It's all about this. It's not about the camera. Camera just makes the job easier. Your goal is to provide a cinematic solution to your client. When you get good at that, you won't have room in your pockets to stuff money. Your life will change. Me teaching you how to be a great photographer, your life won't change much. Your family will love you because you provided prettier pictures. People would think that you're cool because you're, you're, you're uploading stuff to Instagram and it looks good. You'll get likes. It won't change your life much. If I can teach you how to turn what you love to do in a business where you can make money, you can, you can understand the importance of niche, of building your website, of building your brand, of all the bookkeeping, the taxes and everything, your life will then change because you'll start to attract business. Business will pay money. Your lifestyle will go up. Your car may get better. Your house may get better. Your friends may get better. The people around you will get better. You may develop a few haters and that's all good. But you will, your life will change off the same amount of money. That's when people say, well, what should I invest in? Pay a thousand dollars and get a lens or pay a thousand dollars to go learn something. Go invest in this. Go get go get some books and see which one does more for you. So again, um, you know, you can you can it's, there's a lot of ways to do it. Uh also, you know, you want to make sure that. The business side of who you are is a focal point in 2021, right? It's cool that you're a photographer or a videographer, but are you a businessman or a woman? I focus on the business part of myself. I focus on improving that person, right? Because it's a million, I can go hire a photographer. You want to you wanna just keep it 100? I can hire a photographer, but that photographer can't close a deal with a big company like Walmart or Google like I can. I can bring a photographer in all day, give him his day rate, take home my 20000 and hire the best photographer. So something to think about. Any tips on developing your price when it comes to food photography? I know it's a little different base price. Um, wait, okay, a little different from base pricing. Is it more geared towards individual files? So I still use base pricing with food photography. Um, but the difference is going to be in the process of beta testing, right? One of the things that I push, uh, in the course or out the course or here or wherever is beta testing, working with your beta client to understand what their budgets are. Cause you may be going into an industry that you thinking like, I, like I had an example, I had someone going to, uh, working with barbers. I got a great idea for a video, you know, it'll cost about $5,000 and it'll be dope to, but what they didn't take into what they didn't take into consideration is barbers don't have five thousand dollars to blow on a video. Barber shops don't have five thousand dollars to blow on a video. 
So this idea that you have, it is of no value to a barber because there is not much you can do with content that makes that barber feel like I need to save two, three months of pay. There. Now a 500. love as you build out whatever niche you're going into and that's why i preach beta testing so that you can bounce it off an idea of someone in that industry so they can be like there's no way i would spend this amount for that or there's no way i would spend this dollar amount to get contact content it just doesn't work for me so that's why beta testing is where you'll ask those questions you'll develop the budget You'll know what they have to spend. That's why I tell you to beta test at least three people. Um, but when it comes to pricing, I still do. I still charge base pricing. If I'm doing headshots and I know there's a group of people, this is my first price for my first person or first set, my first 10. I usually do like 10. If it's a group, they got 50 people. The first 10 is this amount. And each additional one is this. So still base pricing. Instead of hours, we're doing per person or per item. So everything still applies. Everything's that way. If you have a client that's like, okay, well, if I'm paying this amount, I can add another 20. I might as well get this department done. They can look at the math and make that determination instead of having to go through the process of coming back to you, waiting for you to reply, taking that to the, they can look at it right then and there and make that buying decision. Because if they got to think about it and y'all got to go back and forth for another two hours for your email or call or whatever, portfolio or, or whatever, you may lose them. It may be too much like, ah, maybe I don't uh, you want, I want them to look at them and be like, okay, this is what it costs for 10 more. So if I add another 10, it's another, another 500. Cool. Let's do that. In fact, let me call and see if this department want to jump on while we're doing it. Now your price just tripled. What is it costing you extra? Nothing. You're there an extra two hours, but you didn't triple your, your cost. So I use structure-based pricing with everything because, because it's easy for me to make it. It's easy. You know, I can make sense of it and so can my client. And when my client can understand where their money is going, they see value in it. And it's not just a fairy tale fluff number. People hate, clients hate when you eyeball stuff and you give them a fluff number. Give them options. And that's that's kind of what I teach. Give them options. Because if you give people options, if you give people just a price, then you're giving them two options. Yes or no. Yes or no. Yes or no. Yes or no. You give people options. It's yes, maybe, sort of, almost. I kind of can. I can afford. And then maybe not. And people are usually choosing one of those options before they say no. That's why everywhere you go, that sell you on anything, usually gives you options. You want you want a Big Mac? Do you want a large fry? You want a medium fry? You want a Because the more you think about those options, the less you think about no. Okay, maybe I can take this off. Let's do that. I don't, even if you go and you, you got $3, you're trying to get some off the dollar menu. You're trying to get this out of the other. They give you options. So you can, you can arrange whatever they have to match what's in your hand. That's a selling technique. So something to think about. Um, is there a niche or a market for post-production editors, color graders? Yes, yes. But guess who your ideal client is? Video Videographers who don't want to edit or who aren't great editors or colorists. Yes, there's definitely a niche for it. Um, people like myself who are looking to delegate editing somewhere different so that I can focus on other things. There's always a niche for editing, colorist. Um, it's great if you can do it all within within one. How far do you break things down for your clients when giving them pricing? So I send over a thorough proposal that not only breaks down what they're getting, but it also breaks down. And this is module two that's coming out later. Uh, it's coming out next month. We're going to go into proposals and breaking down what needs to be on that proposal. I don't just send a bill. I don't just send a price, right? Because in my mind, Sometimes I may have to do business with a gatekeeper. I don't expect that gatekeeper to run to their boss with everything that I've told them with that same energy that I gave them. However, 
that proposal should be able to sell my services as if I was there for whoever it touches. So my proposal is usually thorough. It's usually a digital file. And it usually has video in it. It usually has testimonials in it. It usually has case studies in it. It usually have a lot of things so that clients understand what they're getting. But that's just me. That's just me. All right. With that being said, we're going to get ready to wrap. Um, Real quick. Let me put this on the screen because I get messages about this. While I get ready to laugh, get ready to 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 make my uh grand exit. If you're listening on a podcast, we do have a podcast. It's called Content and Cash. It's available wherever you listen to podcasts. So if you're ever in a situation where you want to hear this but you don't, you don't got time to stop. It's on podcast. We we have it available via podcast. Make sure you rate it if you're listening on Apple. If not, make sure you rate it wherever you listen. I do appreciate it. If you learn anything today, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that thumbs up button. I don't care if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that thumbs up button while we do what we do. We'll do what we do. Um, let me see. Real quick, one, one last question. Filming a promo video for a school my wife um, teaches at. It's a paid job. I didn't charge a lot. Uh, I just fit in with their budget. Thoughts? Don't ever do it again. Don't ever do it again. Right? That's the equivalent of saying, I met a girl I really like. She didn't accept me for who I am, so I just fit in to be what she wanted me to be, and now I'm happy. That's literally what that is. Whenever and 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 the reason I wanted to answer that question is because I had a conversation with a, with a good friend of mine, and we we kind of had that. I we were talking about that. Um, your prices are your prices. When you go to Walmart, you don't negotiate. When you go to Payless, you don't negotiate. When you go to McDonald's, you don't negotiate. Your prices is your prices. If they can't afford you, you got to be able to walk away. You're never going to get what you're worth if you're giving everybody discounts. You know, um, you're never going to, it's never going to happen. Moose Man asks, does your structure pricing appear, does it apply to freelance style mixers? They can definitely use it. Yes. Yes. Live streaming right now, I'm using Restream. I'm using Restream. So, you want to make sure that you don't lower your price for nobody. Now, again, there's a, a, a big asterisk to this. If you don't hear nothing, please listen. There's a huge asterisk to this. My pricing comes from working with beta clients, right? If you don't have beta clients, your pricing is just a wish. But I've worked with beta clients in my industry that are three different beta clients. I know what these companies make. I know what these companies set aside for budgets. I know what these companies are willing to spend on marketing. So when I set my price, I have a strong idea as to what they make. So my price is fair. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just going in here saying, I want to make $10,000. I know that y'all got a $300,000 marketing budget this year. I know it. Because the last three companies that I work with, minimum was 300000 Most of them had 500000 So I know what your marketing budget is. So when I say that this content is $10,000, I know that I'm just scratching your marketing budget and it's not going to hurt you. So I can stand firm on my price. And when we go in the meeting and I slide that over and you're like, you look at the price, I can just look at you. And guess what? When I say what the price is, here's the rule. The first person that opened their mouth after that loss. Let me give you an example. You sit in a meeting and you say the price is 4000 Like with the video, we're going to do two videos for you. And the editing is $3,522. The first person talk loss. Because they're either going to say, let's do it. Or they're going to have a question about it. They're going to give you an objection to overcome. Cool. This is what I do, fam. That's when you earn your money. So give me your best shot. Because I'm about to run it into the dirt. We about to jump over this and keep going. Because if you give a price, $3,422, you know what's going to come out of your mouth? 
but we can either discount it or, you know, the price is based off, you, 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 you're lowering your value. The price is based off if we, you know, but we can split it up in the payments. No. You know, uh, but we gonna really, no. That's the price. What are we doing? Would that work for you? I usually go to a strong call to action, right? I usually ask for the sale. Some we teach in the course, but I'll give you a little bit now. So the price is $3,422 for the two videos. We have the 17th and the 18th available. Are those good shoot days for you? They're going to either say yes or no, or they're going to give me an objection to overcome. I'm going to overcome that objection easily. The way my pricing is broken down, you see where the money is going. You see that this is the base price. This is the hourly for a three-man crew. That three-man crew consists of a sound mixer, a camera guy, a director, a producer. You see where everything is. There is no fluff price. There's no guesstimation, estimation. Doesn't work like that. The way I present a proposal, everything is there. In fact, here are some other items we can add on. Teleprompter, extra backdrops, makeup artists, uh, talent. Would you like to add any of those on? It's right there. But I, once I tell you that price, that's it. What about working with friends when it comes to payments? I don't work with friends, period, unless they got the payment. That's it. Do friends walk in your job at Walmart and put stuff in their pocket and tell you they're going to work out a payment with you? Nope. Don't do me like that. So it just it is what it is. Like Treat me like you treat. Your friends spend money with everybody else on time, up front, and they spend top dollar. Why in the hell would it lower when you work with me? And you know, as your friend, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure your, your project is the best. Why would you lower that price with me? Friends that come to me with a discount usually get referred to somebody in a price point. I'm not doing it. So it's just, it is what it is. Um, so you want to make sure that Again, we're going to top this off before we before we bail. You want to make sure that you have three things in order. Three things in order before you're asking where the clients are. Got to have three things. And they're very simple. You got to have your niche. Know what you want to do. Who is your audience? What are you doing it? Why are you doing it? What does success look like within that niche? Got to have your demo reel. Make sure that your first impression is your best impression and you prove to the customer within the first 30 seconds that we solve the problem that you have. That's all we do. We're the best at it. We're worth whatever price we're going to give you. Number three, you need to have a website that gives proof to this claim that makes the client comfortable with doing business with you. Those are three things that you need to have. Do not ask me where the client's at. How can I get customers when all you have is a camera and a lens and you're looking for people and you wonder why nobody will buy from you because you're running up in shops saying I shoot pictures. So I didn't, I didn't ask for a photographer. You asked for a photographer. You asked for And we didn't ask for a photographer. Why are you in here? You're soliciting. Get out of here. Now you've made a bad impression on people who didn't want you to begin with. Right. You can't love nobody who don't want to be loved. You can't make you can't turn a you know what into a housewife. You can't turn a player into a husband if he ain't trying to be a husband. Stop it. That's the equivalent of you trying to turn a, a, a client on the street into a paid client. Babe, good looking out. <laughs> you say let the church say amen because you I just want you to I just I like to be real with you, right? You you follow me because I'm keeping it real and that's what we do. We keep it real. If you're asking about clients, it's not going to happen. Now that you know, no one's half the battle. All right, guys, with that being said, make sure you like. Make sure you share this video if you've learned something. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. We're going to be out. If you are a gold member, all my gold members, Thursday. We're going to get it in Thursday. Um, we, we may be moving some stuff around in the future, but I'll make announcements. We may be moving stuff around. Um, let's see. Let me answer this last one because this is a real good question. And I like I like this question. Um, I get good questions. I suppose I've been gone, but we're getting good questions. So we're going to I keep wanting to wrap up. But this is a good question. As a black person, do you feel you have a problem attracting clients of different races? Is it more challenging to attract business with other races? OK. 
All right, here we go. I'm going to give y'all the straight up truth, real answer to this one. I don't have a problem attracting clients of different races because my website does is not painted with the fact that I'm black, right? It's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just that what does it matter? I provide great content for my target audience. My color doesn't matter, right? It's been plenty of times people have hired me, especially with the name like Ty, and they're like, oh, hey, how, you, how are you? Right? It's been plenty of times that I've shown up and I've had people working with me that were white or different colors, and they ran up to them like, Ty, I'm glad you came. And he's like, that's the guy you need to talk to. It's happened. However, it's usually after the retainer has been paid, and I can care less. Just keeping it real. my Unless you have a niche that's targeted towards a specific audience, then it doesn't matter, right? I don't promote it. You know, you're hiring Flash Film Media. You're not, you're not hiring Ty. So I don't promote it. Unless you're shooting like bar mitzvahs or you have a targeted audience that is of a certain race or religious belief or political belief. You know what I mean? You, if you doing Republican videos, you may want to be all red. If you're doing Democratic, you may want to be all blue, however you want to do it. My, my site has been neutral for a reason. I've shot videos for both sides. To check clear, I'm there. I've shot videos from churches that may have believed in things I didn't believe in or were different. I don't, it isn't, my emotion is not in my business. I don't care. If the check clear, I'm there. And if your beliefs are different, you have that right. I'm just saying my my code of conduct conduct within my business, the culture that I'm building, we work with everybody. Now, you may have a Christian-based content creation company. That is cool. At that time, you need to display your beliefs because it resonates with your target audience. That works. For me, it's not the case. So, um, if you got limited videos to show, would you still launch a website or work on a reel first? Work on a reel first. Go get with your beta beta clients and work because you may learn something from your beta clients that will not make it to your website or that will help you make a better website. Go get the experience first. All right. Um, you know, definitely, is, those are great questions. I had to make sure I answer them. All right. With that. We're going to wrap for the day. I will see you guys. My gold members Thursday at 7. You know how we do it. Three, four hours, two hours. We stay on forever. But I hope that you learned something from this video. If you learned something, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. And let's try something different this week. Hit that share button. Can we share it? Can we do that? Just, just go in your favorite group on Facebook and be like, throat punches, everybody. Throat punches for all y'all. Anyway, with that being said, I'll see y'all later. Stay safe. If your if a mask is your thing, rock it. If not, do what you gotta do. All right. See y'all in the next video.